Hi, I'm Anna Cristina, front person and singer for Zapparella. And in this video, and one other video, I'm going to be talking about my harmonica solos in the song When the Levee Breaks. Now this is uh, dear to my heart because this is the song that caused me to learn harmonica in the first place. We really wanted to do the song, kind of hard to do it without the harmonica, and I said, okay, I'm just gonna bite the bullet and learn how to play harmonica. Now I've, I've, I've played piano on and off my whole life. I've played saxophone uh, for six years. I've played, so I have some music, musical background, which helped, but you don't need to have that to play the harmonica. You just need to want to do it and spend some time with it. I uh, use a B flat harmonica for when the levee breaks because when the levee breaks is in the key of F and when you're playing the blues over a song you want to choose the harmonica that's a fourth up from whatever key the song is in and you're in the cross position with your diatonic harmonica. In the interest of talking about the cross harp concept that you choose a harmonica that's a fourth above the key that you're in, I always have this, you'll see this big label on my harmonica and I put labels on it and I put what key it is because the actual where the actual where the actual engraving is for what key this harmonica is in is right here can you see this no you can't see it because it's it's smaller than a screw and it's tiny and if you're fumbling around in the dark trying to figure out which harmonica to use for the solo you're it's not it's 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 not good I would call it not good so I always put this big label in it. Now there are cases that organize all the harmonicas for you but because I only use a few for our sets I keep it in a very small case that they're just kind of in there. So if I have this big label on it and I have a one on the other side as well and I have a dot on when the harmonica is right side up because when it's right side up the lows are on the bottom and the highs are on the top. If you accidentally play it upside down that's what you're going to, it's, I, I, need, I need to say nothing else <laughs> about that. It's happened to me once. It was horrifying. You I tried to make a joke of it. It was ridiculous. So I don't recommend it. I don't recommend accidentally having the harmonica upside down. So in order to not have that happen, I put a little dot and I, I make a big, a big label on what key it is. So this is my Honer Special 20, which I love. And uh, we're going to get started on that first solo. So the harmonica, the diatonic harmonicas, are made up of 10 holes. And they are labeled 1 through 10. And that is basically your road map for what you're playing. Are you on hole 1? Are you on hole 2? Are you on hole 3? And there are different ways to make, phone, to phonate, to make tones in those holes. You can either blow into it, which is called blow, or you can inhale while having your mouth on it, which in harmonica world is called draw. So you're either blowing or drawing. So there you go. Each one of these 10 notes can make two different notes. Now, I'm not going to break down what the scale is because we don't really have time for that. And this is really just, this is how I learned it. I didn't necessarily break down the scale. I just started listening to the record and learning and finding out where I was. I did take one lesson with a colleague of mine who I work with musically in San Francisco who's a fantastic harmonica player. He wrote out the solo for me and he showed me the blow draw and that was a wonderful starting place for me as, as beginning. So I highly recommend one or two lessons just to get some helpful hints from someone who really knows what they're doing. But then it's just again time. So the top of When the Levee Breaks starts out with the harmonica solo. And it starts out with a trill, which is really fun to play, but it takes a little time to, to get it right. I varied, any, anyone who's seen our video of When the Levee Breaks, I varied my solo a bit from Plants, but I, was, I listened to Plants a lot. I listened to Plants playing a lot. And I, once again, I learned harmonica for this song. And his playing is fantastic, and I've taken a lot from him. His percussive tendency is the same in his vocals, which is one part that I just relish in about stepping into his shoes in these songs. He's so rhythmic, and he's so rhythmic in all his harmonica solos as well, and so I, I tried to take a little bit of that myself. So we're on holes four and five, and we're drawing on holes four and five in order to get that trill, that, to get that, those first, that first lick in, in the solo. <laughs> 
So how do you trill? There's a lot of different ways to trill. A lot of different people have a lot of different approaches. Um, I, I've, I do a little combination. You, really, it's what works best for you. Everybody's mouth is shaped differently. It's a different size. But first of all, also, I should mention that when you're, the embouchure that you use for harmonica, you want to make sure your harmonica is really in your mouth. You don't want to be too far out. And you, there's a, a puckering sensation that you do with your lips, like you're uh, drinking through a straw or kind of duck billing a little bit, depending on what hole you're on. You adjust your embouchure. That's what the way you hold your mouth is called. It's called an embouchure, whether you play saxophone or flute. My mouth is kind of small, so I don't put it all the way in, but I have my lips around the holes four and five on a draw, on an inhale. Like that. And there's also a different tone you can have with the harmonica depending on where your tongue is. It's all coming into play. For, if you have your tongue in this kind of a shape, it seems to be a rounder tone. And if you flatten it out, it thins it a little bit. You can play with that for me. You can play with that with, your, with, the, with you and your harmonica. That's with the tongue down. That's with it up. It changes ever so slightly. So I, I try to have my tongue open on that one so I can get it as round as possible. And tone is an ever evolving thing for me. Um, I, I, with harmonica especially, the tone is really about the player. Harmonicas do sound a little different. Some might sound a little softer, some sound a little rounder. But the tone is really how you play it. So it's your embouchure, it's how you approach, and it, are you pushing too much air or not enough? All of that comes into it. Overblowing can hurt your tone. Blowing too much, uh, blowing too much air can hurt your tone. And certain holes have different personalities and need different air going into it. So that's a trill, and there's, that happens four times at the top of the levee. these bend notes, the fun ones, all right? And I'm drawing on both. And that's three, three, two, bend. Three, three, two, bend, two. And that, that's the two whole bending in that bottom. And I'm going doit, doit, kind of with my tongue for the three, two. Now, two, the two hole, I just have to take a minute for the two hole because it's a tricky hole. And a lot of people have trouble with the two hole. As a matter of fact, I've heard some teachers say that a student, a, several students have come back and said, my, I got this harmonica, but my two hole's broken. And it happens so often with people because it's easy to think that because it's so hard to play and it sounds flat or it sounds like the reed isn't responding or it's just broken. So I find with the two hole, it's, it's an ever evolving process for me. No expert at the two hole here. Oh, and I have one little story about it. Um, I had the most delightful and delicious opportunity to do a little uh, kind of jam with Charlie Musselwhite, who is just one of the best harmonic players out there and actually does a levy solo himself. But uh, he sat in with uh, one of my groups one time and then I got a chance to talk to him afterwards. And I, I said, I'm having trouble with the two hole, Charlie. I'm having trouble with the two hole. And he was so cool. And he said, Well, the two hole's an important hole. And he was so right because there's so much juice in it and you can bend it and it's so bluesy. But it, it takes a little working. So don't feel bad. Don't feel bad if you have trouble with the two hole. Everybody has trouble with the two hole. So that's that bend note. Now, the way I bend that, that is the, is the same hole, it's on the two. is I'm going kind of with my mouth. And I bend the harp a little bit. It just helps me get a different angle on it. Um, I am not swearing that I am the technical master of harmonica. I am telling you again what works for me. And this is what's been working for me. 
and then sometimes I get that little growl in there, right? The growl is literally a growl in the back of my throat. I'm kind of going in the back of my throat as I'm bending. Then we move on to, okay, that's just a kind of a combination of the two, three, four, and it's a draw in the beginning. And it's that doink feeling again in my mouth. So it's draw, draw, blow, draw, blow, draw, blow. That's what that is. That's what that lick is. Draw, blow, draw, blow. And it's messy. And I do it messy every night. And it's messy on the, on the solo. So it's kind of a combination of the two, three, and four, and the four, five. You can play around with that at home. Back to that two bend, that fun two bend. And then it's one, two on a draw with tongues. The, 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 so much of your mouth is playing here. It goes tut, tut. Tut, tut, and that's, what, that's when it's really fun to get really percussive with the harmonica, is to use your tongue going tut, tut, tut. So it goes. I swoop up to the sixth hole. Going tut, 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 tut. Now that's just six five four. The whole six five four. Draw blow. Draw blow. Draw blow. Six five four. Now that's just a combination of the four and five hole. Draw. Draw. Blow. Draw on four. So it's four draw. Five, draw, blow, four, draw. And then I stay on the five, draw, blow, draw, blow. Draw, blow. Draw in, blow out. So. That's the six. So it's draw blow on the five. Then a long blow on six for a minute. So I blow on six, draw on five, blow on six. Then I draw on six for a minute to get that higher note. That's a draw on six, that uh, and it's me going oing, 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 oing with my tongue again. And you can have so much fun with it. That's the other thing, once you get it. You can have so much fun with it and really express the heck out of it when you're doing it. And then I'm back on the five blowing. And then I cascade it down. To the two bend again. And once again, you're really puckering your lips around the harmonica to do this. And I'm, you know, I could spell that out, but it's a cascade down, however you feel it, kind of. And that's a two bend. With that little growl. I go back up to that four or five trill, which how this, this is how the song started. And that's on a draw. Then up to six. Blowing on six. And right, and this is right at the end of the solo. And I might do that draw on the six again. And I let that kind of soar out there. That soars out there. And then the band is taking a four count rest while the solo ends. And then the vocals come in. And during that time, because this song is so swampy and we kind of, we lean together as a band with it, when that comes down, in order to make sure I've got the count exactly like Clem has it, 
Gretchen does this really cool thing for me. She taps her foot. She watches Clem. She taps her foot. Uh, two, three. If it keeps on raining, that's how I know when to come in, is I always have my periphery on Gretchen's foot. Gretchen's incredibly helpful <laughs> during the whole show, but that's one of our little secret moments that we've been doing since we, since we started playing the song. So there you go. That's the solo top to bottom. First and foremost, though, also, it's all about expression. And once you get your way through the solo, your version, the way you want to play the solo, it's about expression. It's about using everything this little thing can do. Harm think percussion. There's so much you can do percussively. And think uh, dynamics, how, you, how soft or loud or when you're going to bend it and all of that stuff. So bring all that in. That's what's really, really fun about playing this harmonica. So next video will be about solo number two. Hope uh, this has helped at all. Thank you so much for watching.